Hey everyone, it's uh, Evan here from Made on Jupiter. Uh, we've developed a little a prototype here for WikiHouse and OpenDesk. It's just pretty much a little example of the features that we've built into Spoke Creator here. And we just thought it would be nice to run through some of the basic work streams that it's got and later some of the tool sets and everything on how this spoke comes together. Essentially what we wanted to do was use this prototype as a, a test or a kind of a configurator that really um, shows the the features in an understandable way and how we think Spoke Creator can be used uh, within usual normal everyday applications to create nicer uh, mass customizable products. So here we have a, a tabletop that was already designed by the guys at WikiHouse. Uh, if we go to OpenDesk.cc they would already made the table and we just got this and configured it into Spoke Creator so we haven't actually come up with the design ourselves but it was just used as a nice example because it kind of goes by the whole open source uh, nature of products you can see if we go into cafe this is what we wanted to replicate and just test to see if this we could actually use Spoke Creator and configure it uh, this object within it so this is the table here you can see it's, a, it's quite a nice uh, simple design uh, all plywood construction. There's actually quite a few laminates going on to get to get the final piece. So basically, what we did, we broke down the desk into four main stages. We've got these tabs up the top here. You can see there's four tabs that we've configured. The first one is uh, creating the tabletop shape. We have a, an interface here where we've configured it to just do an, a plan view of the tabletop shape. Then we've got one that does the leg placement assembles it in a just shows the whole thing together and then finally we can get all the parts extract those and lay them out ready for cutting and then export that out into either an IGS or OBJ format which can be read by uh, your CAM program so basically for the first stage here we want to set the tabletop shape and um, when we look at the desk itself it's actually made up of two sheets or two laminates of uh, plywood which are then stuck together so when we first did this we identified that it'll be quite nice if we can get the tabletop shape and I say okay that that's the shape there does it fit on a full sheet of plywood and generally speaking that's I mean that's the dimensions that you kind of want to be considering at least when you're designing a piece of furniture so especially if it's made out of plywood so we've we've gone and actually made it so it's you're using these five points here which are editable and determines the tabletop shape and then it looks at those uh, measures it up and then kind of draws it in relationship to a plywood sheet which is your 1200 by 2.4 and you can see we've got another one that's actually just been plotted out next to it so you can roughly see if that's going to be you know too much to fit on a sheet to fit two on one sheet you might be able to nest these quite nicely but it's just a general indication um, so you can go through kind of create a tabletop shape that you like you can you have quite a lot of freedom freedom in these we've also started to consider little um, prompts to say okay no those points aren't really going to work because the the fillets that are going on between these points here there's a whole bunch of control points that are hidden in the background and when these start to overlap the geometry that's going on here isn't actually quite right it might look fine now but we needed to actually create a prompt that says okay no this isn't this isn't good move those a little bit further apart you can see that we've also kind of built in it's just measuring uh, on the fly how big this thing roughly is so you kind of get a bit of relevance uh, we can go to the next uh, tab which is the leg placement and pretty much what that does is it gets the shape that we plotted just as a rough outline and then gives us a number of legs that we can put within the table um, at the moment to work to essentially what it does is it gets the outside tabletop shape here and it finds the center point which is there and then it, it will draw a circle around that and then plot the amount of points or leg points that we need so if we can see if we want to actually only have three legs it will just draw a circle then have three legs or three points plotted there instead and it's just for every one of those points it's just copying a set of geometry to that vector so you can see we can have it we've built it so you can have up to six legs um, and one of the things that the original design only had three. I think there's a, a bigger version which has four. 
but since we gave it so much flexibility in terms of the tabletop shape, uh, you'll if we only had three three legs might be right on this because it's it's kind of triangular. But if it was a, a large rectangular shape, uh, three would give it kind of an, an off-center corner. So we thought oh, it would be nice just to give us the options of how many legs we can build into this thing. Um, so basically, you can get let's just run with uh, let's run with three for this one. You can get these and you can select the leg and actually start to drag it around into a position on the table where you think will be best for it. So since this one's quite triangular, we might it's got it's gonna have quite a nice grounding with an arrangement like that. So basically once we've placed the legs where we think it'll be best, we've got another little center point where all these legs you can see they're all facing towards the center point here. Uh, one of the things that we could do, we could automate this process and just have them so these legs are always just facing the, the center point of the desk. Thought we'd just make it a little bit more, we'll make it manual, so to speak. So you can actually grab the center point now and drag it around yourself. And you can see that wherever we put it, uh, the legs are going to face towards those. So if you didn't want to have everything going towards the center, you could, I don't know, do, do something quite interesting. It doesn't have to be within the tabletop bounds as well. Um, just generally all these legs are going to face towards that point so you can have them like going all one way. Uh, one of the things that we also spend a little bit of time on is just working out whether or not we can prompt again more errors so if a user was doing this and per place the leg in a position which is not going to make much sense when it comes to putting the table together, let's say they wanted to put a leg that isn't on the table, it then prompts, uh, prompts us with a little uh, error to say hey let's, let's put this in a place which makes sense, let's put it back in the table. So there we go. Um, generally how it's doing that is that it's calculating the area of the tabletop itself without the leg holes. Because you can see that uh, these table, the table legs come through the desk surface here. So what it does, it calculates the area without those holes for the legs and then calculates the area for each one of these little leg holes and minuses it from those and then works out is it equal to what it should be. Essentially if it's out there then the area is greater and then it prompts to say hey we need to make sure that that area is equal to the amount of holes in the table minus the whole thing overall. We'll run through how this actually does it a little bit um, later in the series just it's a nice little feature that we spend a bit of time on. You can also see that it actually does it if you put it over another leg as well. So let's say we've, we've got all the legs there nicely placed. Uh, we're ready to now have a look at how high is it going to be, what angle the legs on and everything as well. One of the things that, just quickly before we move on as well, is that we've put a little reset button in the top here for all of them. So if you completely go crazy, nothing works how you want it, uh, if you click click reset, it just bangs everything back into the default position so then we can just build it quickly from there again. And there. Cool, so now we've got everything in the right place, looking good. Let's go to the assembly stage. So essentially what it does now is that it grabs all that data of the tabletop shape that we did, uh, where the legs are, and puts it into a 3D model for us, which is quite cool. So essentially now we haven't actually told it how high we want the table to be. We've looked at it purely from an elevation view, so now we get the chance to actually dictate how high this table is, what angle these legs are on, and what the material thickness that we have uh, available to us and we're going to be using. So we can ex just go to the slider, so we're going to be working essentially only in the slider, on sliders with this one. We can go and grab the tabletop height and pull this, so it's actually going to start lifting the whole table up, adjusting all the legs for everything. Uh, we can change the angle of the legs. Uh, you can go completely crazy and have them right out to 30 degrees. That's um, interesting. So we pull it back in a little bit. And also we've built in, you can see it's also starting to create all the joining geometry for the CNC as well, including putting in little dog bones and all the joins. We've got that going on underneath here as well. So when we go to adjust the material thickness, it's we've got a, a general value at right at the start of the parametric network that says okay this is the material thickness throughout the whole entire network so it's gonna when we go to change this thickness here it's gonna prompt 
that to change right at the start of the network and then change all the geometry and everything the sheet thickness within that so we can go down and actually start to crank down the material thickness say we only have 12 mil um, you can see that it's gone in and it's actually starting to change all the uh, cut geometry all the thicknesses of everything and even everything underneath as well so we just crank that back up you can see that it's considering it wherever it's uh, critical within the design we can build in for it to change with the material thickness I've done a number of projects now where you create everything in a CAD and then find out that your material is half a mil thicker and you have to go re do, redo all the joins. So this is a little feature that we've just built in just so you can, if your material, we've actually you can see we've got the step of this value set at half a mil for each of those, but we can change it to go down to 0 0.2, 0 0.25, uh, whatever really is makes sense for that. So let's just say we went around with 18 mil. Yep. Looking good. Table a little bit lower. No one likes a low table, let's crank it up a bit. And essentially once we're happy with that, we can go to the next stage, which is the cut layout. And this is where it gets the, the table, all the heights, the angles, everything that we've done, and again just prompts it back into an elevation view and a and then just with simple line drawings we can actually start to get these and start to nest them within your sheet, which will be then be exportable and ready for CNC. So now we've got uh, two tabletop shapes here. Uh, you can see we've actually got six legs. Uh, if you remember right, we actually went through and only put in two, three legs here. So what's going on there, you can see with the design, it's actually got a laminate of two sheets. So we've gone through, identified that, and gone within the cut layout here, we've got six legs which make when you glue them together will make three legs and it's the same with these little stabilizer joins as well that we needed six of them for three legs so we've gone through and just multiply, multiplied the amount of legs and then use that as our copy so when we go in here we can actually start to see that it's actually it's building in all the geometry we need for these joins the file that we had uh, we realized that within the when these two tabletop sheets get laminated together um, it's kind of hard to tell off the bat with this one but you can see that this is the top sheet and this is the bottom sheet within the design top sheet bottom sheet and the bottom one actually has a slight step this hole for the leg is slightly bigger than this hole um, so that locks the leg in place so we realize that this needs to be built in and we've got it so now it's actually drawing geometry for that step within the leg as well so we can actually start to do some quite complex uh, line work and uh, include tolerances and everything as well and when we do the material thickness and change that it's actually going to start to change because this length here starts to correspond to the material thickness this one here and this one here as well as the thickness of this overall slot are all determined by the material thickness so we can start to grab these now. We've got a, a few options up in the primary window here. Um, the space in between just generally um, I put in at the start just to kind of space everything out. It's it's a pretty dull slider at the moment um, and it's arguably not really useful anymore but it's, it's still there. Um, but we've got another one here which is the number of sheets. So you can see at the moment we've got it set to two. You can crank that down to one. Uh, it's just generally, it's, it isn't actually going to change anything in terms of what we export. It, what's going to be exported is just generally the black line work, but we just built in the sheets here just to use as an indication of when you're laying it out, you can be like, okay, I need to go in order. It's only going to fit on two sheets, or we can, if you really want to create a crazy desk, we've got it so you can crank it right up to four sheets. Um, that's going to be a big table. Uh, with this one, you could probably nest this enough to just fit into one. So, let's start to grab these things. Uh, we've built in a, one of the new tools that we're quite excited about is just simply a, a transform selected node. So we can select, uh, we've grouped these items together. So we've got the tabletop pieces all grouped together and all your legwork uh, grouped as separate items. So you can actually grab, start to grab these things and move them around. Quite fun. Um, you can actually move all the pieces at once as well. So basically we can get these now. 
go okay that it's probably going to sit in the corner there, but it's wasting a bit of material there. Let's uh, flip it around. Put it in there. Grab this one. Mist it up nicely. And we can start to grab some of these leg pieces as well. And put these a bit close together as well because we're wasting a lot of space between them. So essentially once we spend a bit of time going through and nesting all this out we can go up to the option here we've got a node that prompts that this will be a level where stuff is ready to be exported out so we can go and export this geometry straight to either your dropbox or your disk so i'm going to say okay i'm going to drop save that to my dropbox it will and essentially what it's going to do it's going to grab all these black bits of geometry and have them ready to go so you can see I've already had it set up for my Dropbox. If you haven't had it set up, it's just going to prompt you to allow Dropbox or this application to save bits to Dropbox. Um, it's just a quick three-step three step max thing to do. Once you're ready with your file name and everything, you just go export. And that should... I've already got one saved there. Let's overwrite that one. You can see it's uploading to Dropbox in the meantime. So once it's saved out the geometry we can go into our Dropbox. I'm gonna go here you can see that within Dropbox it actually creates an app folder. Uh, a few people have got lost with that but you go into apps and then we'll have one called Spoke Creator. You can see anything that we've saved out has been saved within there. So I'm essentially gonna now just open that up. Uh, the model, well the CAD program that I generally use is a Rhino here so I'm just gonna drag that in there go open file you can see that now we have yeah we have a set of geometry in IGS format that is ready to be sent off or edited or anything it's pretty much essentially ready to go onto the CNC machine now so that's how we managed to integrate uh, OpenDesk into Spoke Creator we feel it's been a, a pretty good success and we're keen to see what other uh, pieces we can start to build into it now cheers